Toyota Halftime Report, brought to you by Toyota, makers of the all-new Toyota Tercel. These are the times. This is the car. From our New York studios, your host, Brent Musburger. Happy Halloween, everybody. Some weird things going on tonight. Soldier Field coming in disguised as a typhoon. One thing is so interesting. The Green Bay Packers, they always bring strange weather to the television set. Remember? Back in 84, it was the Packers in Denver, a freak snowstorm, the middle of October, the first play, the fumble, and it was Steve Foley to the end zone, and the Broncos win it 17-14 to on a memorable night. Now these conditions, Gail Sayers, a rookie back in 1965, he scores six touchdowns against San Francisco. It was wet. They need Sayers. That's what the Bears need. And right now we're going to send you back to Soldier Field. They're going to be retiring numbers 40 and 51. And here's Al Michaels. Al? Thank you, Brent. The Chicago Bears, that proudest of franchises, are retiring the numbers of two men who played the game in distinctly different realms. Gale Sayers floated on air. His name itself has a lilt, and his running style combines silkiness with evaporation. Poof, there he went. Knee injuries chopped his career in half, and like baseball Sandy Koufax, he came and he went too fast. His tenure was both fleeting and fabulous. Seven seasons were enough to make him the youngest Hall of Famer ever. On a football field and off, Gale Sayers was the epitome of elegance. While Sayers' feet rarely seemed to touch the ground, Dick Butkus was entwined with the ground. In our mind's eye, he's covered with dirt and mud and blood, and the sound effects are growling and grunting and snarling. He was rough and tough and mean, and he relished the role. He was the monster of the midway, and the people having to block him, every encounter was Halloween. To an offense, he was the epitome of terror. Pro football combines grace and style with controlled mayhem. And so it is with Sayers and Butkus. They embodied those descriptions. They are Chicago's beauty and the beast. Let's go to the field. Team. Ladies and gentlemen, bear with us for a moment as we await the ABC National TV audience, which will show this special moment across the country. Right there. He wanted it eight, eight minutes for right there. Stand tonight's two honorees. Is a man who played football with rare grace and instinctive elusiveness. He was able to run the ball at full speed and make a cut, leaving tacklers sprawling in the mud. As Bear fans everywhere know, he was the most purely exciting runner ever to play the game. Ladies and gentlemen, Gail Sayers. As Bear fans everywhere know, when we watched Gail Sayers run, we were watching a master magician at work. Gail, thank you for seven glorious seasons and fabulous memories. Tonight, on behalf of Bear fans everywhere, it is my privilege to retire Bear jersey number 40 forever. Thank you very much, Mike. It was a great honor 
to play in the National Football League. But I consider myself very, very lucky to play here in Chicago for you, the great Chicago Bear football fans. I want to congratulate my teammate, Dick Buckus. After my first year in the league, I prayed every week that the Bears would not trade me to another team because I would have hated to play against number 51. There are two people very special to me that are not here tonight, but I'm quite sure they're looking down and smiling and probably saying it's about time. And that's George Hallis and Brian Piccolo. Thank you very much. Again at the North End Zone, our second Chicago's vocational high school. From there, he went to the University of Illinois. He played the game just the way it should be played. An elemental force on the football field. He could destroy a runner or a blocker. Ladies and gentlemen, game, Dick Butkus. It is my great It is my great pleasure tonight on behalf of Bear fans everywhere wind or rain or snow notwithstanding to retire Bear jersey number 51 forever the greatest linebacker ever to play the game Dick Butkin Thank you, Michael. Years ago, if somebody had told me that one day you'll be standing at a ceremony on Soldier's Field with one of the greatest running backs who ever played the game, Gal Shares, in a ceremony, and they were going to retire your jersey forever from the Chicago Bears, I would have said that it was a pipe dream. However, I do dream, and one of those dreams that is coming true tonight. As a matter of fact, in my life, a lot of dreams have come true, and I'm living proof that the American dream is alive and well. When I was in high school at Chicago Vocational, I dreamt someday I'd go to college and play some big time football, and that dream came true. When I was at the University of Illinois, I dreamed someday that maybe I could play for Papa Bear and the Chicago Bears, and that dream came true. When Michael McCaskey called and told me of this honor, I was thrilled beyond words. I stand before you with deep humility and pride. I'm proud of Chicago, and I'm proud to tell you that when I played for you, I gave it the very best I could. In closing, I. Be, risk, be, be remiss if I didn't say my thanks to the good Lord that blessed me with my talents, blessed me with my parents who raised nine children and loved them to no end. I'd like to thank my wife, Helen, and my children, Nikki, Ricky, and Matt, whose support has been unending. I'd like to thank the entire Bear organization, the McCaskies, my teammates and coaches, and all of you Chicago Bear fans, and of course, Papa Bear, who I'm sure is looking down on us tonight. Thank you very much. Chicago, the Loop, Michigan Avenue, the Wrigley Building, the Sears Tower, Buckus, and Sayers.
Halftime, Green Bay leading 14 to nothing, and we'll be back. Dick Butkus and Gail Sayers were classics, and now I have a question for you. Who's the best player in the NFL today? I would nominate this man. Number 20 of the Detroit Lions, Barry Sanders. Great cutback move against the Giants yesterday. Turn it upfield. That's why in half a season, Barry Sanders has rushed for better than 1,000 yards. Look at that list down to number four, the defender, Emmett Smith. We welcome Peter King of Sports Illustrated. Peter, you spoke to Emmett. He can't be happy about being number four. Well, Brent, in a very, very unselfish way, Emmett Smith is a lot like Wade Boggs and Tony Gwynn in baseball. He loves records. He wants to win a fourth straight rushing title. Only Jim Brown has won more than that at five. And he still thinks, even though he's 287 yards behind Barry, I talked to him today, he still thinks he can win this year. Yeah, but there's trouble on that offensive line. No question about it. Eric Williams underwent surgery today. They found much more severe knee damage than they thought. He underwent major reconstructive surgeries out till July. Peter, any room under the salary cap for the Cowboys to sign a replacement? Absolutely not. They'll be lucky to sign a blocking sled, Brent. <laughs> Look at these figures. You got $38,000 for the Cowboys under the cap now. The Vikings can afford a spate of injuries. They got $1.9 million to work with. Speaking of money, look at this scene in Indianapolis. Bernie Kukar is the referee in white. Number 66, Donald Evans of the Jets. What happens here, Peter? Brent, any professional player knows you cannot shove or put your hands on an official, no matter what the official does to you. Evans touches the official, Bernie Kukar. He's going to find himself $5,000 lighter this week, Brent. Clearly, the referee touched him first. Brent, you cannot touch an official. He's going to get fined $5,000. Not even the day before Halloween? No way. No way. <laughs> we'll be back. Second half of the Packers and the Bears on ABC. It will open your eyes and turn heads. It is smart. It's about getting more, more power and better handling, more miles per gallon, and more style, inside and out. It's about choice, two doors or four doors. These are the times. This is the car. It's the all-new Tercel from Toyota. The Toyota Halftime Report has been brought to you by Toyota, makers of the all-new Toyota Tercel. These are the times. This is the car. We'll be back with a second half kickoff after this from our ABC stations. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Merrill Lynch. For our clients, the difference is planning. The difference is Merrill Lynch. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. In Chicago, where it's been raining all night and all day, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynch Swan on the sidelines. Uh, more no shows than shows at the moment. And uh, 14 to nothing is the score. Green Bay on top. Either Kevin, that or Kevin a lot of these out there practicing a little bit. Either that or a lot of these spectators on Halloween night are dressed as the invis Invisible Man. One or the other. No lofty yardage there. Except when you get to that turnover category and you see the Bears have rolled it over three separate times and uh, Green Bay has capitalized uh, with a touchdown on one of them but they are up 14 to nothing and amazingly still no passing yardage for the Green Bay Packers as Brett Favre has yet to complete a pass last time a team <laughs> well it's been 20 years Buffalo against the Jets. Uh, no I wonder what kind of weather there was. Of course, Buffalo also had a guy named O.J. Simpson running the ball for them back in 1974, and they won the game 16 to 12. Well, Thus you know, saith our producer Ken Wolf. <laughs> Joe Ferguson was the quarterback. It, it, it couldn't have been a snowy day. It was September mm. the 29th. Windy, very windy, extremely windy. Oh, those letters from Buffalo are going to come. Out. None of us maybe played in New York. Or did that say at <laughs> Buffalo? Where was the game played? Please say it was in New. In, Oh, it wasn't about Buffalo. Okay. Orchard Park. Yeah, you're right about the letters. The yeah. Chicago Bears will receive the kick here in the second half as Chris Jackie kicks off from the 30 yard line. We'll see if Jackie uh, elects to kick it this time or we'll just stare at it and make his uh, coverage mates offsides as he did in the first half. I think he'll kick. So the. Green Bay actually had the option here in the second half, and they elect, as Chicago did, 
after winning the opening toss with Robert Green running it back to take it back to the 18-yard line. Remember, Chicago won the, the coin toss, elected to defend the North goal. That gave Green Bay the option to start the second half, and they elected to do the same thing. And Steve Walsh will come in at quarterback. So Dave Wanstead, who said, Kramer is my starter, there is no wavering at all, has just wavered. I really wonder if it's a full-blown waiver. He's down 14 to nothing, and Kramer is not all that healthy with a bad ankle, with a bad shoulder. I would think that Kramer is still his quarterback, but maybe at 14 zip in this kind of a field, get him out of there. Here's Tillman. Well, the thing, the thing about Walsh, though, is that we've, we've talked about this before. He's he's a great guy to come in and maybe protect the lead or in a real tight ball game, but not down 14 to nothing in these conditions. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. There's one of the Shula boys. That's Mike Shula, who's over on the Bears sideline, sending in the plays. Well, to I think Steve Walsh couldn't hear it. I mean, he which who knows shook his and, head and uh, well, in this kind of with the water, with the uh, with the wind. I think we could have a helmet short circuit or an electrocution. Fumbles the snap. Walsh still picks it back up and throws, and it's caught by Keith Jennings, the tight end who was the last cut in training camp and then was re signed after Gedney was injured. Of course, he just has had a couple of days of work. We didn't know that he was going to be activated tonight. And again, Walsh loses the ball in the very first snap. Good presence there. Fires the ball to Jennings, not noted as a receiver. When he was a starting tight end for the Bears over the past two years, good blocker, but he comes up with the reception. Third and two for Chicago, opening moments of the third quarter. Green Bay ahead, 14 0. And a third and two into the wind, going for it through the air, hits Curtis Conway. First down up at the 39 yard line. If nothing else, he's given them a spark. Tackled by Coons. And if nothing else, on top of that, Al, they're getting out of the part of the field that is starting to come apart. You see the holes back there in the background. This entire game has been played down at that end of the field. And this is a key completion to Curtis Conway, who just runs a little hook pattern and stops. And that is a very safe pattern to be running. And a good one for Walsh to get his first completion. The second completion, rather. He's already got one to Jennings. The longest completion of the night. That's hard to believe. From the 39-yard line, first down. And uh, Raymond Harris, minimal gain up to the 40-yard line, second down and nine. They've adjusted this offense. I think all we will see going, particularly going against the wind from either team, are the kinds of passes we've seen. Just the little patterns where the receiver takes it downfield, turns into the quarterback, and they try to get the completion without getting any kind of fancy movement because they're not going to be able to get the ball way out to the side. They're not going to get the ball deep downfield, just short little dinks. Although I like quarterback rollouts in a, in a situation like this, uh, not just because Favre ran one for a score, but a three or four yard run by a quarterback is pretty effective in a game like this. Here's Walsh on the money again up to the 45 yard line. The catch is made by Keith Jennings and with Kramer looking on from the sidelines, Walsh has taken the knock to the 46 where it'll be third down and three. Boy, Jennings and Fred Strickland looked like they had joint possession there for a while. And Jennings, 270-pounder, uh, was able to wrestle it away from Fred Strickland, the middle linebacker of the Packers. Take a look at this thing. Going to come right at us across the middle. Maybe and, even that yeah. ball, only in the air for about 10 or 12 yards, wobbling and flopping and so difficult control, to control the ball. Third and three for the Bears up at the 46-yard line. And Walsh and Graham slip. Graham slipped. The pass was high. And this drive box down. Fourth down. And Frank, that's the toughest pattern to try to throw into that win. Uh, forget it. That ball was flying. It wasn't the slip so much. It's the first time Walsh had a feel of what it was to throw it to the side. And the ball just took off on him. The rain is horizontal right now. So good luck on this kick. From the 46-yard line, Gardaki. He almost missed the last one. Forget it. <laughs> it's coming back. Yep, it is. And it is down at the 45-yard line. That is a nine-yard kick. This something. That kind of night. 
Halloween in Chicago. <laughs> it's been a long time since there have been this small of a crowd at Soldier Field with this much football still to be played. 20, 26 minutes plus of football and uh, this place sparsely populated. From the 45 yard line, Reggie Cobb. Short game. We've got uh, Maurice Douglas in the game for Sean Gale, who was hurt earlier. Let's get a report from Lynn Swan. Swanee? That's right, Al. Sean Gill had, had torn abdominal muscles, and they've taken him to the hospital just during halftime. They put him in the ambulance and took him to the hospital to treat him there. Also, in terms of the field, you're absolutely correct, Dan. The left end of the field, excuse me, the right end of the field was torn up, but the right end is also very slippery. Sean Jones told me when he came off also that when you plant your foot, you get good traction, but it's hard to get your foot up. Al? All right, so Lynn, it's second down and nine at the 46-yard line. Favre, well, he's going to pack it in again. He's in oh. the territory. He's off to the races once more and finally stumbles in the mud at the 32-yard line. <laughs> I think in, in this type of a field, I think it's something Chicago ought to do more of is, is get your quarterback outside. Now, Favre can't run. He's a good athlete, but the, uh, the traction, the advantage, definitely, Frank, goes to the guy who knows where he's going. Well, he's a good athlete. Some competitor, too, and he... He knows it's difficult to throw the football. Now he pulls it down and makes a real good move back to the inside, and then he just got, it's a case of the double feet collapse right here. Well, Brown got a little heavy, and down he went. That move of his put both Dante Jones and Chris Zorich on the ground. That was a 22-yard gain. Here is Bennett. Favre now has the two longest runs of the season for the Green Bay Packers, and has yet to complete a pass in this game. And I'll tell you one thing: the folks in the north end zone must wonder. What game? Well, the ball has been beyond the 50-yard line towards the north part of the field. Has it been? One time. <laughs> not much. Those people haven't. Not much. <laughs> they, they have not. I don't know what they've seen tonight, but nothing's been remotely close. They certainly could come down to the other end. <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't a cruise ship. It won't tilt. Second down and eight from the 30-yard line. Then it's been the workhorse tonight. And he is close to a first down. He's tackled at the 22-yard line. Ken Rutgers threw a nice block to get him sprung. And uh, it's close to a first down. And the Bears. Uh, it is. The, better, the Bears better make something happen here in a hurry. Green Bay is starting to move this football, and their offensive line starting to take control of things. Packers coming in yeah. just a little desperate into this game that Three and four, and knowing that if they lose tonight, they're going to fall three back of the Minnesota Vikings. And, and I think you can see on Dave Onset's face right there that he senses the urgency of what a Green Bay score would do to his ball club. From the 21-yard line, Cobb. Well, he, with a spin move, is able to turn negative yardage into a positive yardage. A yard gain, second and nine. With the, the Chicago Bears having won three in a row after losing to Philadelphia on that Monday night and then Minnesota, they appeared to have it turned around. But then last week, they had every opportunity to beat Detroit and put it. They lose this one. They're four and four. Schedule is tough for them as it is for the Packers the rest of the way. Well, that loss to Detroit last week really hurt. They only give up one defensive touchdown. They give up a touchdown on when Chris Spielman steals the ball and runs it in. They give up a touchdown on a Mel Gray kickoff return. There is, oh. well, it was almost the first completion of the night. They say no, incomplete. Ed West dropped it. Ed West is having trouble holding on to the football tonight. Is that not like the third time that he's had a football hit him right in the chest and, and come out? I'll tell you, it's a difficult yeah. night, but Ed West is having more problems than most because he's had some good opportunities. You just have to, on a night like this or a day like this, for that matter, you have to look the ball into your hands. You've got to concentrate. He's doing yeah. all of that. He just had too many fingers there. And Ed's not a bad receiver. Oh, he's he's a receiver. pretty good receiving yeah. tight end. He had 19 catches mm -hmm. coming into tonight. He's not a Jackie Harris, and that's what the Packers really miss. Third all down and nine. Tight. Farm still trying to hook up and does. And Sterling Sharp extends his consecutive game streak as well. As he makes the catch, it goes to the 13-yard line, and the most prolific pass catcher of the National Football League over the past two seasons, 
makes his first reception of the game on Favre's first completion. And it looks like we're going to get a, uh, a look at our first field goal attempt of the evening. Chris Jackie comes on the field. Looked to me like Sterling Sharp was trying to end that play without hitting the ground. I'm not sure he wanted to get his pants wet. Hmm. He made the complete, made the reception, got stood up. 95 straight games yep. or about six years worth uh, for Sharp. And now a 30 yard field goal attempt by Jackie. Winters little... will snap it and Hendrick will hold it. <laughs> and it is blocked. And Danell Wolford is there to come up with it at the 26 yard line, along with Albert Fontenot as well. Fontenot was the guy who blocked it. And Chicago is able to remain down by two touchdowns. Oh, big play for the Chicago Bears to stay into this game. Well, Jackie did the double clutch. He started towards the ball and then stopped. Let's see if it's a clean hold. No, oh, a wobbly snap. That kick was doomed from the beginning. Jackie had to start, then stop, then start. That never worked. Craig Hendrick, the punter, is the holder. Frank Winters is the snapper. The snap is kind of low to the inside, but it really just bounces off of Hendrick's hands. And Jackie starts and then stops and really isn't able to put anything into the ball whatsoever, and it's blocked by the Bear. Still 14 to nothing. Green Bay, Chicago at the 25-yard line. And Tillman exploits a hole for a gain of six with six minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Packers on top, 14-0. We mentioned the, the upcoming schedule for Chicago is tough, even though they're at Tampa Bay next week. Five of their next six games are on the road. And Green Bay, for the rest of the season, plays only two games in Lambeau Field, two others in Milwaukee, and then they've got a rather tough Thanksgiving period. Oh, they have to play in Buffalo on Sunday, and then on Thanksgiving Day, travel to Dallas. Back-to-back road games to last year's Super Bowl teams. That's hardly a favorable bonus for the Packers and Mike Holmgren in talking to him last night is uh, painfully aware of it. Tillman <laughs> with the ball carrier and Steve McMichael's been pretty quiet tonight the ex bear and on the uh, tackle. Well why don't we just take a look at it. He is number 90. He's locked up with his old friend Mark Bortz. This kind of night too, isn't it? A lot of mud, yeah. a lot of dirt. Stood boards up, take, took a peek into the backfield, shed him and made the tackle. His being in Green Bay might be uh, one of the big problems with the Bears run defense. And McMichael could have played in those uniforms. He is a throwback. A first down for Robert. Oh, he loses the football. And Green Bay has it. Doug Evans comes up with it. Well. What a pickpocket move by Evans. How did, how did he get that ball away from Green? Spielman got it away from Gedney, and here's a Chicago first down and a loss of possession. Just ripped it out. And a great move by the cornerback. And the back has it back. Well, Green Bay winning the turnover battle there as they have yet to turn it over the Bears four times and take a look at that it's been since 1969 that the Packers have played the Bears and not turned the ball over and that says a great deal I think about the quality of the Chicago Bears defense over the years they forced those turnovers after this turnover this is Bennett from the 36 yard line Edgar Bennett inside the 20 takes it to the 16 yard line and the Green Bay Packers tonight have had three runs, each of which has been longer than any run they had in their first seven games this season. And who would have figured it in, in these types of conditions? And a couple of them by the quarterback. Bennett again, sort of the all-around back that you need in this kind of an offense, the Mike Holmgren offense. Good break back across the middle. Gets away from Carrier. Good strong running and good numbers on the part of Edgar Bennett. Good block out front there by Harry Galbraith. First down at the 17. Bennett again, his 21st carry of the night is a functional one as he takes it down to the 12-yard line. Gain of four or five, and we have 420 left in the third. 14 have, to nothing Packers. I'm going to throw this out because I, I don't know the answer. I hate to ask. Have we had a holding call tonight? No. Really no. unusual in a no. sloppy field like this that you don't uh, get some sort of a holding. Somebody slips and drags a guy down with him. Well, it nope. has been a relatively yeah. clean game from a from a penalty standpoint. Mm -hmm. 
Ball at the 12, second down and five. Bennett burrows to the 11 yard line. It'll be third and four. Joe and again, on the tackle. we're at the end of the field where this entire game has been played. One of the reasons they're letting Bennett handle that ball, he has handled the ball about 250 times, either receiving or as a running back, and has not coughed it up. He's very sure-handed, puts it away. He takes good care of it. Good cutback to he get took, a couple of yards. He took out a, a pretty good chunk of the Soldier Field side when he made that cut back to his right. It's really getting messy in this part of the field now. Third and four, far. That's his second completion of the night. The catch is made by Robert Brooks, who takes it to the one for a first and goal. Carrier with the tackle. Well, Brooks, the left side counterpart, most of the time to Sterling Sharp. It's very little attention as they gang up on Sharp, and he is wide open on this, and Favre gets another completion. Just clearing a Bears outstretched hands. Carrier there to keep Brooks out of the end zone, but it'll be first and goal inside the two. In adverse conditions like you're experiencing here at Soldier Field, looks like the Packers are forced to take a timeout. They've got some sort of confusion as to either the play or the personnel. It has been a very efficient performance by Brett Favre. First and goal when we come back. Valerine Paparazzi. That's, uh, I believe, one of ours. <laughs> <laughs> First and goal at the Chicago one-yard line after the timeout. Reggie Khan was in motion. They give it to Bennett, who's had a big night, and it's even bigger. Edgar Bennett with a touchdown, McIntyre with a block, and Edgar Bennett in his first pro start in 92 ran for 107 yards against Chicago. Since then, he's had no day that's even come close until tonight. And whenever the Packers have needed some crunch yardage, they have always gone to the left. Winners at center, McIntyre at left guard, Rutgers at left tackle, Paul Hutchins gets put out at tight end. Look at that block on the pull by McIntyre. That is really high quality work by the Packers on the left side of their offensive line. They've been getting good block blocking out front by Edgar Bennett. They've been getting it from Cobb. They've been taking turns, pummeling the Bears on that side of the football. And they now have what appears to be, in this kind of a weather, a very commanding lead. Really? Yeah. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here, and a seal here, and try to run this play in the alley. In their 75th anniversary season, NFL owners and players have a message for all football fans. Tomorrow night on ABC, Tim Allen with home improvement, Brett Butler, Grace Under Fire, part of our big Tuesday night lineup. And then on a Wednesday night, that quartet of Programs coming your way in prime time right here on ABC. We take this show to Dallas, more specifically, Waving, Texas. Next Monday night, Dallas against the Giants. Score 21 to nothing as Curtis Conway fields the kick. And is run out of bounds up at the 33. That's the. Uh, now, now, there are some of the sweetest feet that ever belonged to anybody. Walter Payton standing on the Bears sideline. We always said that this guy was resourceful, and that's a pretty effective way of keeping your feet dry. 
Walter stopped up in the booth earlier and said hello and he's here tonight to honor Gail Sayers Dick Butkus. This proud franchise has had its share of Hall of Famers. A real tribute to Gail Sayers and Dick Butkus. Uh, this stadium was more than half filled with the rain starting early today and it's sparsely filled now but they came out to Sayers and Butkus. Walsh intended for Harris incomplete. Second down. I had the honor of going into the Hall of Fame, the same class that Gail Sayers got to know him. Very special individual. He's got his life together in great shape as has Dick Butkus. Leroy Butler is limping off the uh, strong safety. Tim how well, he has been banged place. up. He was question mark coming into this game. Bruce Shen. I didn't know whether he was going to be able to go. Second down and ten. Tillman. No. Hello. Not at all. Gilbert Brown. Gilbert has. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gilbert has made some plays tonight. That one he chose to keep his helmet on throughout the play's entirety. But he has, uh, you know, for a second-year player out of Kansas, uh, he got him waivers. Yeah. They've Minnesota. Sure they like him. They, and he is a large one, 6'2", 330 pounds. And Gilbert's got a little something to say. Yeah, it's when you got the lead, you're making the plays. Go ahead, let it hang out a little bit. Third and 11. You saw Butler come back into the game, though he's still limping. Walsh has it deflected and incomplete. Knocked down by Reggie. Reggie White. Well, Reggie is. I, we were talking about earlier moves inside in the nickel situation and he is a force <laughs> at his age you'd think that he might be reaching that point he almost goes off sides but you'd think he'd be reaching that point where maybe his performance would start to slack off a little bit if anything this might be the best white that Reggie the best year that Reggie White has had in some time. Reggie 32 oh, years old. It's this hard kick. to imagine that he's getting better at this age. This kick into the wind and <laughs> falling down is Mike Pryor making the catch at the 34 yard line. Pryor got his feet stuck in the, <laughs> in the mud. He couldn't get him out and down he went. Hey, yeah, Reggie uh, really just rededicated himself this year. Got his weight way down. He's a very spiritual guy. I think everybody realizes that dedicated this season to making it the best of his career and well he's come up with it and offensive tackles all around the league are really delighted well, he thrilled, decided yeah, to yeah. do that he, he <laughs> tries he, he tries to convert him out right there on the field he'll get him down on one knee one way or the other he'll he'll also get them thinking about next week <laughs> just get me out of this game I've had enough from the 35 yard line I believe oh farm is going to the air Completes it to Anthony Morgan, the former Chicago Bear, makes his first catch of the game. Pretty obvious it was his first catch of the game. You saw him running that pattern. Talk about sticking out. Look at that uniform. No <laughs> way he's going to sneak on the field. That thing might as well be iridescent. Well, the first thing you want to <laughs> do to feel like one of the guys, get out and roll around in it a little bit. Well, easy for Brett Favre to see Anthony Morgan. Again, the Packers working with the wind. A lot easier to throw that football. Gain of 17. Half a minute to go, third quarter. And far to the air. So here's a team you'd figure they'd be running out the clock or taking as much time as they could off the clock, and they're going to the air. Incomplete intended for Cobb, second down. Boy, that was Both teams try screens tonight. They're really tough to do. It's a, a timing play all the way. You have to get the line, get the little bump blocks and the pull. The timing has to be perfect. A tough field to pull a screen off on tonight. And if your defensive linemen aren't getting a great rush up field in a sloppy field like this, they're really in a position to defense the screen. That time Zorich was all over. Second and ten. Packers at the 48 of the Chicago Bears. They better hustle it up here. They'll just get it off. Favre throws and it is dropped at the 33 yard line. Reggie Brown, the tight end. Talking about West dropping a couple tonight. Reggie Brown can't handle one here. And, uh, excuse me, Reggie Johnson. 
the ex Bronco. Well, he almost pulled it down now. One handed it, had it for a moment on his scuba glove. We, uh, and we, got, away. we haven't talked about the other tight end, the, the Jackie Harris story, one of the, the premier tight ends of the National Football League. And uh, we talked about how much they miss him. Well, he's in Tampa Bay, got a tremendous deal. Green Bay wanted to keep him, made him a spectacular offer, but not spectacular enough. Fake wraparound, third and ten. And the catch is made by Sterling Sharp. That's, that's about as open as Sterling could ever get. And he has a first down at the 27-yard line. Well, how does a receiver like Sterling Sharp, who usually commands double coverage, get that open? Obviously, some error in the defense. He is absolutely wide open. Nobody picks him up. Breaks out to the outside. Loses his man there. And that will end the quarter as the the Packers take advantage of the last time they'll go with the win. So that's why they went to the air here as the third quarter ends. It's 21 to nothing and Monday Night Football returns after this for our ABC station. Ba 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 <laughs> we start the fourth quarter quickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that count. Right on time. Green well, Bay on top by a score of 21 nil. The wind obviously is prohibited play at this end of the field. And uh, for the first time, the Packers are moving the football, much to the delight of the fans uh, or the fans that are left here in the north end zone. Reggie Cobb picked up a couple. They are uh, they're doing their number on virgin turf right now. <laughs> Before a, a rather sparse gathering, I I don't I don't know if we uh, got an official attendance figure as yet tonight, but uh, it was a sellout. It totally sold out. It's been selling out for years here, but with the weather, a lot of no shows. A ton. Sterling Sharp takes it to the 11 yard line for a first down. He'll disappear for a while, but when he makes his reappearance, he is quite a presence. Well, and Brett Favre, one of the great receiver runners after oh. he catches the football. And Brett Favre, who didn't have a completion the entire first half, is uh, starting to nail them here in the second half. He's a little bit sheltered down here, too, with the stands. He's kind of in the lee of the stands, and probably a lot less wind than there is in midfield. Well, he'll be able to work the ball in the air a lot easier down here. From the 11 yard line, Khan swings to the outside, avoided Douglas, and then gets uh, tackled by Dante Jones. Frankly, Brett Favre was having a heck of a night. He, he was questioned about whether or not he would even be able to play this game. He, of course, left the Minnesota game uh, 10 days ago. They played on a Thursday night with a severe bruise. Below his left hip. It wasn't a hip pointer per se, but he was questionable as to whether he could go again. And he not only has gone, he has been running the football, throwing it well, directing the attack, and, and he has been he has been the difference tonight. And even more importantly than all of that, which is something, he hasn't made mistakes. Second and twelve, dumps this one into the arms of Edgar Bennett, and there's a guy having a huge night. Edgar Bennett. This is a route. This is a demolition by the pack on the Bears. This is uh, this is reaching the embarrassing category here now. They've done the right things, and they've had uh, again. We'll go take it right back to Brett Favre. He's not made mistakes. He didn't get the completions early in the game. Ran the ball well himself. Has been well. He's been frankly tough out there. And a big night, as Al mentioned, for Edgar Bennett, the complete all-around football player for the Packers. He can do it all. Bennett, third year out of Florida State, played for oh. Bobby Bowden. We've got another problem here with Hendricks' hole, and now you've got a two-point conversion attempt. Oh, that's, that should be interference. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and they got a flag. flag. Down. Yeah, he was knocked flat while the ball was in the air. But that might have been a lineman, Joe Sims. Say. Yeah, well, he depends. might have declared his eligibility. If he was though. lined up as a tight end, we'll have to go back and see where he was lined up. Howard Rowe will check it out. It's not unusual to have uh, 
to have a, a lineman with an ineligible number on the end of the line in a in a extra point and field goal configuration. That's the discussion right now. They're yeah. trying to figure out who lined up uh, far left. And it takes a quintet to determine this. That many minds working together will come up with a the right solution. There's no question right about in the middle. what happened. Right was in the middle he of an eligible screen. receiver? Doink. <laughs> or was he just an offensive line? Defensive line-up? pass interference. Yeah. Number 68. By rule, spot the ball on the one-yard line. Retry. Now, 68 was actually the offensive guy. Dante Jones was the uh, defender. 53. Well, Jim, Jim Flanagan uh, wears number 68 for the Green Bay Packers. There's the mishandled snap from center. Well, what a good move by Jackie, though. And 68 is Sims. And he's knocked flat. Looks like Dante Jones is the guy that hits him, number 53. So, the Damn. pack now going to go for two from the one-yard line. Pretty solid move after their inability to try to kick something from placement. And uh, Edgar Bennett just can't go anywhere. John Mangum, among others, stopping him. So the conversion attempt is unsuccessful, but the Packers have things well in hand. 27 to nothing. It's uh, it's that kind of night. That's what the sidelines have been turned to. As a kid, that might have looked inviting. On a night like tonight, that mud is cold. Temperature here now has probably fallen into the upper 30s. Chill factor down somewhere close to what they said earlier at eight degrees. Oh yeah. And as the old sports cliches go, it's a whole lot colder on the Bears sideline than it is on the Green Bay side of things. 27 nothing the pack on top when this game uh, started 47,381 wound up making their way into Soldier Field 19,563 did not come and that's how bad the weather has been because in Chicago uh, they're used to bad weather cold weather in November and December fans to put up with a lot but pretty tough tonight from the 26 yard line the kick is run back back up to the 43 yard line by Robert Green. Woo! And that's where the Bears will take it with 12 minutes and 47 seconds remaining until the Packers go to 4 and 4, as will the Bears. Twelve forty-seven to go. The Chicago Bears trailing 27 to nothing. And for the Green Bay Packers, it's been uh, a very important game, a very important victory that will be forthcoming here in a situation where after that overtime loss to Minnesota to go three and five at mid-year and the tough schedule upcoming, they needed a victory tonight and they're going to get one as the catch is made by Tom Waddle up at the 47-yard line and the Bears will go without a huddle. It'll be second down and three at the 47. <laughs> and uh, well, it worked. It was snapped a little early, but it was accepted and given to Robert Green, and he picks up the first down. And the Bears will go without a huddle at the Green Bay 44 yard line. Jerry Fontenot, the center, handed that thing over to Steve Walsh. Uh, looked to me about on one when it was supposed to be on three. Walsh throws and wide open over the middle. It is Ryan Wetnight, the appropriately named Ryan Wetnight, oh, making it to the 28-yard line. Oh, we've been waiting all night for that one. First and ten at the 28. And this, <laughs> remarkably, the best-looking drive the Bears have had going all night. And slithering his way is Robert Green to the 24-yard line. A hurry up offense directed by Steve Waltz calling the plays from the line of scrimmage. They're not saving a whole lot of time. Second and seven at the 25. Walsh under pressure and that one is incomplete. So it will be third down and seven. And let's check in with Lynn Swan. He's still here. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still here. <laughs> the wind's still flowing down here. I'll tell you, shouldn't be too many traffic problems leaving Soldiers Field, not just because of the score, but because the temperature has dropped. 
based on my experience, Al, covering sled dog races up in Alaska <laughs> playing for the Steelers, I'd say it's probably in the low to mid 30 degrees about right now. Also, my lips are cold, Al. As, as the Iditarod veteran, yeah. we believe you. Watch, Swanee, out. watch out for the moose, Swanee. I think Swanee gets combat pay for tonight. <laughs> right. Third down at seven at the 25. Contact. Jay Lundberg. The right guard was locked up. I think it's 11 18 to go in this game. 27 to nothing. That Lynn ought to get a little relief. Perhaps a little warm up time in the truck. I think Lynn is probably thinking that wouldn't it be swell if one of us went down there and spelled him? <laughs> Not. Third down and 12 at the 30 yard line. Oh, Shan. Well, the, nothing like breaking up a play and not having any idea where the ball is, but that's the uh, lucky fate that befalls one Tim Howe. Intended for Ryan Wet Knight. Tim had good coverage on Wet Knight. Had he been aware of the ball was in route, he might have had in the INT. Wet night on a wet night. Two year men out of Stanford. Tight ends are very busy for both teams tonight. Ferris going to four wide receivers here. Fourth and 12. And very oh. close to a first down. Did he get it is the question. The catch is made. Graham gets up and takes a look. And it's uh, more than likely close enough to bring in the chain gang. The Bears are going, oh, come on. We're, we're down 27 to nothing. Give us a spot. Doesn't work that way. 10.56 remaining. Need to be a, a first down for Chicago on this drive, and it is. Well, they would have turned it over on a fourth and 12. Very good judgment on the part of Jeff Graham, the former Pittsburgh Steeler. Hey, they slapped this thing in the end zone here. I've seen crazier things. They'll have this win, obviously, for the balance of the fourth quarter. A quick score, a Green Bay mistake. And catch is made by Waddle. Well, you know, Walsh to Waddle I'm complete. not going to suggest that they're going to no. win this game, but in that Philadelphia game we did in week two, Philly had that 30 to nothing lead. Chicago scored 22 points and had a chance to recover an onside kick with about a minute and a half left in the game. They did. But by the way, it was Waddle's first catch in three games. He's been out with a couple of a couple of games with a cold muscle. And second and five, and well. it's thrown into the end zone and picked off by Leroy Butler. Well, that, and that's speculation. <laughs> it was an interesting topic while it lasted, and Leroy Butler uh, comes up limping, but he also comes up with the INT that and the ball just kind of gets away from Walsh. Oh, that's good work by yeah. Adler. I think uh, Leroy might uh, sit the balance of this game out. There's a Green Bay Packer fan who's sitting up in the stands with all of his friends. All of his friends. <laughs> well, maybe he just doesn't have any friends. And the Packers tonight rolling 27 to nothing. Edgar Bennett picks up three. Well, the fans that remain can vote for uh, beginning this weekend. The NFL allowing the fans now to cast a vote for the Pro Bowl, the fans, and the coaches. And the players will each uh, share in uh, the voting. It's the only. Uh, such instance in the professional sports where you've got that sort of arrangement and they'll vote for the players to play in the Pro Bowl in early February and we will be there for the Pro Bowl game in Honolulu on the 5th of February. We might be there early. And tonight's the night we're just thinking about it. Brings a smile to your face. Yes. <laughs> Reggie Cobb, time for no gain. <laughs> Third and seven. Third and seven is the 
Chicago 90 in 1994 allowing 142.7 yards rushing per game they've never led the NFL in rushing yards allowed and, and they're, they're leading it by yep. almost 20 yards a game over Kansas City and second look at it tonight 183 third down and oh. seven and Bennett makes it about 185 they've also given up the two longest runs of the season Johnny Johnson going for 90 in the Jets Bears game Barry and Sanders, Barry Sanders uh, last week you know and they've Ooh, also hello. they've <laughs> also gotten behind so many times early that so many teams have just decided to sit on the ball run the football and consequently they have given up a lot of yards with against the rush you caught uh, Ron Botchin the the umpire who might uh, be able to work in a laundry tab on his <laughs> expense account this week he got dumped and not have it questioned <laughs> Hendrick the punt into the wind <laughs> and it just dies it dies in the mud at the 43 yeah, that almost unbelievable. That, that thing looked like it had a string attached to it the flag is down back at the 12 yard line a little collision after the ball was kicked 19 yard kick Howard Rowe, who loves caviar, will give us the call. Running into the kicker, number 94, five-yard penalty. John Theory got, got a little eager, thought he had it blocked. Missed the block and collides with Gardaki. Yep, pretty much laid an egg without. <laughs> uh. I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 807 remaining Billy. in the fourth Running quarter. Running into the kicker. <laughs> Five yard penalty on number 94 defense. Repeat fourth down. Soldier Field here on the shores of the Caspian Sea. <laughs> right. On a sturgeon out of that lake. <laughs> you know there are, actually. Yeah. Hendrick will kick again. That's the one good thing. Well, you, you hope it's good here. The punters of punting averages for the most part to uh, just go into the muck on a night like tonight. You have to take this punt in from a distance to, to really appreciate the velocity with which the ball starts and how quickly it disappears. Watch we'll watch from the end zone. Watch this ball curve coming back with the kicker. It'll make a little left turn. Oh. Straight down at the 49 yard uh, line and it's a 22 yard kick with a penalty worth three extra yards on that punting average 758 remaining well the Lincoln Mercury Kapalu International uh, from one of the uh, more spectacular venues in the golfing world begins on Saturday on ABC and then after that Regional college football action Miami Syracuse Wisconsin against Ohio State or the Trojans of USC against the Cougars of Washington State at 330 Eastern this Saturday on ABC nothing I like don't. playing golf at uh, Kapalua watching the humpbacks jump uh -huh. in the straight between Maui and Lanai a course village course one of the great uh, one of the great vistas in the golfing world fabulous Tom Waddle makes the catch. And again, the Bears going without a huddle down 27 to nothing, 7.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Waddle, first time back in a couple of weeks, having been out with a full muscle. Full tendon, as a matter of fact. Walsh. And he will away, who breaks away from a would be tackle by Butler and moves to the 18th for a first down. A good quick read by Steve Waltz and well delivered. Not the strongest arm in this game, but he knows where to throw the football. And one of the comments that Waltz said last night, he said he will not make the mistakes. He knows where to put the football in. He put this right in between the zone. At the 18 yard line, first and 10. And he throws, and the catch is made Wetnight. over the middle. Ryan Wetnight takes it to the 11. Six. 
It'll be second and four. Second and four at the 11. The Bears were here not too long ago. Ball got away from Walsh, sailed high. And Leroy Butler intercepted it in the end zone. See what happens this time around. Robert Green pokes his way down to the five yard line. If you are Dave Wanstead, who is your starting quarterback next Sunday against Tampa Bay? I would think it'd be Eric Kramer. I think his decision was to take Kramer out based on the fact that he had a very bad ankle. He's had missed three games early in the year with a severely injured shoulder and he was in trouble on he couldn't be Eric Kramer on this kind of field. No, no, I don't think anybody loses their job playing under these conditions. First and goal at the five. They pick up the blitz. It's lofted into the end zone incomplete intended for Waddle. The coverage on the play by Doug Evans. Second and goal. Second and goal. Mike Shula. Brother, of course, is the head coach at Cincinnati and uh, I think a few of you have heard about his dad. Daddy's on a pretty good roll too. Yeah. They went over New England yesterday. Daddy's got a pretty good football team. Yeah. Daddy usually has a good football team. <laughs> he has a bad team that plays well. Second and goal at the five. And he Whoa. Got the end zone touchdown. It's Jeff Graham. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. His third touchdown of the year and he had all those well, not all those years, but several years with the Steelers, and where he never could get it into the end zone. Caught a whole bunch of passes for him, and I think it was 147 or so, and never could get it into the end zone. With the Bears, this is number three Six for him. Plays, well, he had scored three one seconds, touchdown in his first 47 games, and now he's caught touchdown passes in his last three. And the Bears are going for two. And Walsh got a little fade, and it's Graham picking up eight points. No, 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 no. no. They say he's out, and he can't believe it. How does he even know? I mean, why yeah. is he complaining? I mean, he, was, he had no idea where his feet were. Well, the officials did a nice job of conferring before they came to a decision. They both were stationed on the line. They made a good uh, well, he made a good decision to talk about it first. Close. There's possession. They There's won. one. And, and the second way one up. way up. Yep. And you can see both of the officials there right on the line in perfect position. And it remains a 21 point Packer lead. So a total of 33 points have been scored in this one. 27 to 6 is the score. Green Bay on top by 21. Next Monday. Real understanding of what's happening. We certainly do. This game is still not over. It's the old Giants Dallas against the Cowboys, Cowboys next Monday night at uh, our standard time, 9 Eastern and. Six Pacific, Emmett Smith will be in action. Troy Aikman, of course, they uh, survived a big scare at Riverfront yesterday. I guess. But they come in with a mark of seven and one, and the Giants are desperately trying to get things turned around. Losing in overtime to Detroit yesterday. Having lost five straight after beginning the year with three consecutive wins. The Jints and the Cowboys. Dallas is always a great attraction on Monday night. You'll see them next week. Guess that game to be played in the soon to be expanded Texas Stadium, right? Jerry Jones hopes <laughs> the soon to be expanded. Yeah, I've heard that for a lot of years. I think, uh, I think we'll see an onside kick here by the uh, by the Bears. Does or, that, that what what uh, made you think of, that they would be doing oh, that? Oh, I don't know. Just you know, been around the game a long time. Right? Just one of those intuitive things. It does attract a crowd out there. <laughs> Well, the Packers have it. At the 38-yard line, it is Mike Pryor, who used to play with the Indianapolis Colts, getting a hug and giving Green Bay possession. Ball like took, old, a, took a pretty good bounce right there. It came up in the air, and the Bears had a really good shot at it. John Mangum almost... Uh, Came up with it. He got one hand on it for the Bears. On this kind of field, the ball did not take the bounce that it ordinarily would. It 
usually about the second hop it'll go up in the air eight or ten feet and there's a mad scramble but on this kind of field it didn't get that bounce Packers look like they'll end their streak but the Bears I think are going to add to theirs yep they're going to tie a Monday night record in fact yeah they've lost six on their way to seven and Edgar Bennett continues his big night and Edgar Bennett beginning to emerge as a star now at the 26 yard line with his pass catching ability well noted uh, 42 catches to tie sharp for the team lead coming into the game and 105 on the ground tonight the Bears six consecutive losses and this will be number seven Bennett had that rookie year came up a fourth round draft pick in 92 had over 500 yards rushing and kind of fell off last year They'll join that company. Will the Bears, the Jets, the Jets played in the first ever Monday night game. Jets against Cleveland in 1970 and lost their first seven. Denver in that Kansas City game a couple of weeks ago, that classic, that was their seventh consecutive loss on the Monday night. Atlanta hasn't won on the Monday night in a long time. Reggie so Cobb. Three of those streaks still alive. Yes. <laughs> Atlanta, Denver's, and uh, the Bears, and the Bears now uh, winners of only 12 of their 37. Yep. Monday night appearances. And th th those teams will all go into the offseason sharing it because we don't have any of them on Monday night the rest of the year. I bet they're going to think about that all, <laughs> yes, all, all next sure. season. Sleep sure. tight. Really not worried not about it. it. <laughs> it's 27 to 6. <laughs> what do you expect? Second down and eight at the 23 yard line. And Reggie Cobb. Goes down to the 13 yard line. I guess I should have known we were in trouble when you got into the caviar. <laughs> that was a precursor of things to come, wasn't it? No real reach. Just a little morsel. Well, the Packers did what they had to do. They got themselves to 500. They brought the Bears back to 500. And uh, we documented early about uh, the Vikings appear to be in a pretty secure position in the NFC Central. And I think the pack has uh, made a pretty good stride tonight to say that uh, we are playoff potential. Back to back nine and seven years. Mike Holmgren has uh, done a pretty good job of putting together a competitive ball club here. Well, they got their offensive yep. line back together, and that really came, that really helped them here tonight. Gave them a lot more confidence. They had to run the football on this kind of a field, and they were able to do it. McIntyre came back, winners moved back over to center. They're thin, but they have functioned well tonight. And they got a good, strong performance out of their quarterback, Brett Favre, who was questioned about whether he'd be, be able to play or not. Not only did he play, he was a, the inspirational leader. Not throwing the ball too well early in the game, but he was running the ball well. Three got minutes to go. Eight. Second and eight, Reggie Cobb goes nowhere. The Central Division tightening up behind Minnesota now. The Vikes will be six and two. Chicago and Detroit and Green Bay will all be four and four. Chicago next week goes to Tampa. Minnesota's home against New Orleans. And Green Bay next week in a big one against Detroit in Milwaukee. And there are the standings, or what the standings will look like at the conclusion of this game. You touched on the top when they're playing on the 20th and then playing four days later. On Thanksgiving Day against Dallas. Buffalo and Dallas in what, four days. Third down and eight. And Cobb is stopped. You know, it's a funny thing. 14 teams in the NFC, and here we are at the halfway mark of the season. And only four teams have winning records as we come to the two minute warning Dallas, Philly, the Vikings, and the 49ers. Only four of the 14 above 500. Two minutes to play. Well, it's Halloween night. It's been a night of horrors in uh, Chicago for Bears fans. Ugly night for them. Packers have dominated. They lead 27 to 6. 
And they have just about run the clock out. We're down to the two-minute warning. Green Bay has it, fourth down and seven at the bare nine-yard line. For a while, it started to look like it was going to let up, and it's still coming down and still blowing. Weather's been frightful. Packers have been delightful, though. Reggie Cobb for the touchdown. Reggie Cobb takes it over. In case you missed it, Reggie Cobb roaring around the right side. Boy, Harry Galbraith out in front, uh, out there with a good block. Let's take a look at this punctuation mark by uh, the Packers. Galbraith, number 76, the right guard. Rutgers, the left tackle, comes around. Beautiful block out front. Dorsey Levins, the uh, lead back, and boy, that's just a well-executed play by the Packers. Rutgers from Scarces High School in Bakersfield, California. Your old uh, stopping grounds there, huh, Frank? You got it. Boy, that was a good-looking kick, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was straight. <laughs> Wide right. Wide to the east. Speaking of Ken Rutgers, he was one of the most recruited athletes ever to come out of the San Joaquin Valley and, of course, went to USC. Trojans okay. against Washington State. Well, the Trojans are still in the Rose Bowl hunt, but how about those Oregon Ducks? Well, not fun to go up to play Washington State at Washington State, I can tell you that. Nope. Been whopped up on a few times there. Strange a couple things. Of times. Strange things happen in the Palouse. That's uh, Keith Jackson's uh, alma mater. Oh, isn't it? That's exactly right. Grew up wriggling his toes in that bright red Georgia clay and matriculated in the Palouse. Well, I saw him Saturday afternoon in Lincoln, Nebraska. See, he did all that. Buffaloes were thundering across the plains on their way into Lincoln. Is that where he got that accent <laughs> growing up in Georgia? And they uh, yep. went thundering right back out of Lincoln. <laughs> Packers rushing for 223 yards tonight, and that's their best. In that department in nine years. Well, keep a keep in mind uh, they were averaging 74 a game coming in. That's the second best yeah, output so far this season in the league. That will not help the Bears' <laughs> defensive stats, will it? No, no, no. Yeah, they were. That's Fred Shermer. So many years around this league, 62 years old, and still like the Iron Sparkers and Bud Carson. Bud Carson's uh, one of the. Yeah, well thought of defensive coordinators. Buddy Ryan. Yeah, Buddy's oh, he's a head coach. Head man for a while now. Well, the Packers tonight, that running game spectacular. Only only the Steelers have had a, a better day this season running. They rushed for 261 in a game against Indianapolis earlier this season. And tonight it's fair caught. The Green Bay Packers. Oh, There's something that's perfectly legal, but you don't see all that often. Fair catching. A kickoff, and it was done by an offensive lineman, if you, uh, a defensive lineman, rather, Jimmy Flanagan. <laughs> but up at what, at the 45-yard line? Just very unusual presence of mind for a defensive lineman. So the ball is at the 35-yard line for the Chicago Bears. Minute 53 to go. Steve Walsh drops it off underneath. Catch is made by Robert Green out of the backfield up at the 39 yard line. This is one of those situations where I'm not sure that there are the proper words in the English language to describe how good the hot shower is going to feel to these players. It's not going to be all that difficult to complete that many more passes for about four <laughs> yards against that defense. Bring it again. Just don't give up the big one. You know, this is one of those deals where if I'm the Bears, I'm so mad at the Packers beating us so badly, I turn off the hot water in their shower room. <laughs> Third and one. They were known to do that. That's right. Years. Well, George Hallis did it because you know what it costs to heat up water. That's I why. Swear, he... 1963, <laughs> Wrigley Field. We played the NFL championship. We. We lost that game. We came in and there was no hot water. 
Well, didn't they tell us that the fridge used to occasionally go home without taking a shower after the game? Those were uh, those were the rumors. Those uh, <laughs> we had them confirmed by three independent. Yeah, sources. we did. We did. I'm just trying to give the guy a break. <laughs> Bill's a good fella. There's Steve McMichael, Ming, Mongo, the ponytailed one uh, on the winning side tonight. He has a How dog. sweet that must be for him. His dog is a Chihuahua. Get out of here. McMichael has a Chihuahua. Yeah, uh, that's that's his dog. Huh. Wouldn't have been my first choice, my first guess. And did you get that confirmed by three independents or just like <laughs> no, I just <laughs> read it in one of your locals. <laughs> At the 49 yard line, first and ten. Walsh throws, and that's incomplete. But isn't it a great picture though of Michael walking a Chihuahua? Well, it's Halloween night. Our executive producer. Jack O'Hara. We should give everybody a, a nickname tonight. Jack O'Lantern. Jack O'Lantern. Jack, Jack O'Hara, executive producer. Can't think of a nickname for Kenny Wolf, but Wolfman. So yeah. scintillatingly Wolfman. producing the yeah. game. Craig Janoff, director. And Joey Shavo, our TD. Ben Harvey, our associate producer. Our crack crew, Jaime Bravo. Helping to put together that sensational open. Bob Simon, the production manager. Dennis Zabo and Jim Lacana. On the technical end. And the pass is caught. Fred King and Brian Gordon. What a Doing pair. A scintillating job. Great pair. Steve Hurd, our director of information. And uh, the gang's all here. Andrea Bryant up in the booth with us. George Hill. And Malibu Kelly Hayes on the spotting upstairs. And Malibu tells me that Bobby Christian made that last catch and takes it down to the 37. And you know, uh, you know, Craig Janoff, our director, actually bears a striking resemblance to Kevin Green, the uh, linebacker for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Was, uh, yeah, Steve I didn't Walsh. realize that they were such lookalikes. Steve Walsh calls timeout with six seconds remaining. Down 33 to 6. Prolong the agony. Well, the agony for Chicago, at least it's a, a short week of agony because the Moved down to Tampa Bay on Sunday. Green Bay goes to Milwaukee to face the Detroit Lions, who have won uh, four games this year, and they've become the first team in NFL history to win three games in one season in overtime. On we go to Texas next week. The Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. You going to play a little golf down there? I think so. I think we're all going to play a little down there. In Los Cleanus. In the uh, shadow of uh, the statue of Byron Nelson. Yep. We will uh, tee it up next week. Walsh, well, his numbers will look fairly good tonight as they uh, let him throw a lot of completions underneath. The game ends on a reception by Waddle, but the Green Bay Packers in a very important game, perhaps a turning point game for them, coming in staggering along three and four. Having suffered three excruciating defeats, come into Chicago and really lay one on the Bears. Final score, 33 to 6. Talk to you next week from Texas. Until then, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardrug, Lynn Swan. Good night and happy Halloween from the Chicago. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football has been brought to you by Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. AT&T, we help put your world within reach. Lay's Potato Chips, bet you can't eat just one. And Little Caesars Pizza Pizza, where you always get two great pizzas for one low price. Saturday, ABC Sports begins coverage of the Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International, plus regional college football from the Big East, Big Ten, and the Pac-10. Now, except on the West Coast, stay tuned for your late local news at ABC News Nightline over most of these ABC stations. Want to talk to us? Span the globe with ABC Sports and America Online. Call 1-800-474-9900 for a free in-home trial. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. 
Hi, Tom. Well, no question about it, uh, Kathy. Hi. Uh, it was a monster mash out there, but surprisingly, all the things that we said about the uh, field, the field held up. It was the wind that li literally turned this game around and the turnovers that the Packers were able to uh, cough uh, up uh, against the Chicago Bears. So I guess we broke even on this Halloween uh, night. Mother Nature decided to throw us a, a trick, but the uh, Green Bay Packers turned around and give us a big treat tonight as they defeated the Chicago Bears. Immediately after the game, we had a chance to talk to Leroy Butler, a happy Leroy Butler. I guess you want a wet field every day of your life, don't you? Well, this kind of weather we think about, you know, you dream about. You can't worry about the weather, you just got to get it done. It's a bear pack again, you can't worry about it, we just got it done. Now, you guys never lost lost faith in the offense. You, they proved themselves tonight, didn't they? Well, the thing is, I think the offensive line, I think they won the game ball today because they really put it on those guys. They drove them off the ball, Ben had 100 yards, Reggie scored at the end. You know, when the offensive line doing like that, we can always win. Big pick in the end zone. I was trying to preserve the shutout, but we didn't get it, but still, you know, it's just one of those things. Just out there doing my job. Go enjoy. Happy Halloween. All right, thanks. Happy Halloween indeed. The Green Bay Packers meeting the Chicago Bears. We'll have more coming up in sports. And surprisingly, and this may surprise you, the stands are empty. They have gone home in the weather tonight. <laughs> I was surprised that we got a time sooner or later. We want to know why the rain didn't favor the Bears when the experts said it would. We'll get back to you. <laughs> That's true. I think it has something to do with their ugly uniforms. They look like pumpkins out there today. Well, thanks, Tom. We'll get back to you later for some more plays. Now we got yeah. Julie Pesh at a party. Continuing our <laughs> yeah. team reports at the Packers Party Down on Water Street. Julie. Well, Kathy and Jerry, I can't hear a word you're saying, but I hope you can hear me. You've got some very happy Packer fans here. But earlier tonight, they were outside in a makeshift stadium, and uh, it was the next best thing to being there. Do uh, people think that you're crazy sitting out here in the cold? Probably. True blue Packer fans huddling together at a makeshift stadium on Water Street, pretending they were at Soldier Field minus the rain. They were freezing, and it's fun. I guess I was brainwashed from a very young age, and it's Green Bay Packers or bust. And when the Packers busted out at the end of the first half, scoring two touchdowns, these fans felt like they died and went to heaven. At least some did. I'm a devil. Others just rallied in a Packer victory, knowing what a nightmare on Water Street it would have been if the Packers lost this one. Oh, that'll be great on Monday night. You know, you love to see that in front of national audience and everything. That'd be great. Even the strictest Bear fan knew early on these monsters of the Midway weren't that scary anymore. Are you taking your life in your own hands by being here tonight? Sometimes I think I do, sometimes I think I don't. I've only been here for four weeks, so it can't be that bad. And of course, the best costume to be wearing tonight is a Packer costume, green and gold. Kathy, Jerry. <laughs> We're surprised you aren't wearing one. Julie's a major fan. Thanks. Absolutely. Julie Pesh, downtown in Milwaukee. Much yes, the Green Bay Packers did an excellent job of defeating the Chicago Bears in this Halloween night on a uh, rainy sh uh, Chicago night in uh, Soldier Field, and one person that is uh, wearing a throwback uniform of the uh, Green Bay Packers, Steve McMichael. I had a big smile on his face after the game was over. We caught up with him out in the field also. Steve, how's it feeling, Chicago? Oh, well, this was some adverse conditions, but it feels good to come back and win a game. Yeah. Happy Halloween, huh? Happy Halloween once again, indeed, Steve McMichael. Not seeing too much before this contest because of the fact that he knew anything that he said would probably end up on the bulletin board with the Chicago Bears being a former Chicago Bears, so he kept it pretty well quiet, but I'll tell you what, the Green Bay Packers did most of the talking today. As they win big and get themselves back in a uh, race as far as the playoffs concerned, a uh, big game uh, coming up, of course, at uh, County Stadium against the uh, Detroit Lions, but tonight they defeated those Chicago Bears. Back to you in Milwaukee.